A very good evening aspirants. I welcome you all to the Hindu daily news analysis brought to you by Shankar AS Academy. Today I am going to cover important news articles from the Hindu newspaper dated 5th of June 2023 and displayed here are the list of news articles that we will be discussing today. You can go through it. At the end of the video we will also have prelims practice question discussions. So try to watch the entire video and a kind request to you all those who have not it subscribe to our YouTube channel, do subscribe and hit the bell icon button so that you will get regular notifications about our future current affairs videos. Now let us get into our first news article discussion. Now look at this article from the text and context page. See recently there was a train accident which took place in Odisha. It was a big tragedy and many people lost their lives in this accident. You might have wondered if there are no system in place to prevent such accidents. So today we are going to see about one such safety system which is called as the Kavach system. See the Kavach system is an automatic train protection system which was developed in India. The purpose of this is to make train travel safer. The Kavach system was created by the Research Design and Standards Organization in collaboration with Indian Industries. Know that both the Shalimar to Chennai Coromandel Express and the Ishwantpur to Howrah Express were not fitted with Kavach train collision avoidance system. This is because the Kavach system project is yet to be implemented on the Howrah to Karakpur to Chennai line. Now let us see about the important features of Kavach system. See the Kavach system is a state of the art electronic system with high safety standards. So basically it is designed to prevent trains from passing a red signal and to avoid collisions. Know that Kavach works automatically and activates the train's braking system if the driver fails to control the train speed properly. Now let us say you are driving a toy train and you accidentally drive it too fast towards another toy train on the same track. So the Kavach system on both trains would automatically apply the brakes to avoid a collision between the two trains. Okay. In addition to preventing collisions, the cover system also sends emergency messages during critical situations. Thereby it helps the railway authorities to know where there is an emergency and take necessary actions to keep everyone safe. Apart from this, the cover system is also helpful during foggy conditions when the visibility is low. During foggy conditions, the cover system activates a hooter which is like a loud horn. This will alert the train driver when they are approaching a level crossing. So it will help the driver to know that there is a crossing ahead even if they can't see it clearly due to fog. Okay. Now how does this Kavach system work? See the Kavach system works through the train collision avoidance system. This system uses equipments on the train and transmission towers at stations with radio frequency identification tags that is RFID tags. Therefore, it allows for two-way communication between the station master and the train driver to convey emergency messages. The system helps train drivers know about signals and permissible speeds in advance through the instrument panel inside the cabin. If a train jumps a red signal and two trains end up on the same line, the Kavach system takes over and applies sudden brakes to avoid a collision. This is how Kavach system works. Now let's talk about where the cover system has been implemented. See one of the places where cover system has been deployed is South Central Railway Zone. The South Central Railway has installed the cover system in 77 locomotives and 135 stations. This covers a distance of about 1465 kilometers. This means that trains running in that area have the cover system to ensure their safety. The cover system is being implemented in a focused manner. The first priority is to install it on high density routes that is the routes where trains run closer to each other. For example, imagine a busy highway where many cars are driving close to each other. So these areas would need extra safety measures. Just like this, high density train routes also need more safety measures. And this is why the first priority to install cover system is given to high density routes. And the second priority is given to highly used networks which means the routes that are frequently used by trains. Then the third priority is given to other passenger high density routes and finally the aim is to cover all the routes. See in order to implement the Kavach system, the railway board has approved three companies to provide the required equipment. These companies are Meda Servo Drives, 
HBL and Kernex. They are responsible for supplying the necessary technology to make the cover system work efficiently. See the cover system has addressed glitches and vulnerabilities related to various situations. These include vehicles crossing, closed level crossings, stray cattle or boulders on the tracks, radio communication issues in tunnels and guard sections that is mountainous areas. Overall the cover system is an important step towards making train travel safer. It helps to prevent accidents by stopping trains at red signals and avoiding collisions. And it is being implemented on various routes to ensure the safety of passengers and reduce the chances of accidents. Okay, this is all about cover system. In this discussion we saw about what is cover system, then we saw about how it works and finally we saw some points about the implementation process. See this topic is very much important for your both prelims and mains. So make note of each and every points that we discussed. Now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this article from the editorial page. This article is about the burning issue of who has the control over civil servants in New Delhi. Now in this discussion we will learn the points provided in this editorial article. Now before getting into discussion the syllabus relevant to this topic is given here. You can go through it. Now first we look at the ongoing issues in New Delhi. See the issue began with the question of who has the control over the civil servants in New Delhi. Whether the lieutenant governor or the elected government. This is what the question. See earlier this matter went to Supreme Court. Then on 11th May a 5 judge constitutional bench headed by the Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachud had given a verdict that the elected government of Delhi has control over the civil servants. This Supreme Court's ruling is based on the concept of triple chain of command. See the triple chain of command holds the civil servant accountable to the ministers. The ministers in turn are accountable to the legislature. And finally the legislature is ultimately accountable to the people who elect them. So basically the Supreme Court judgment accorded the control of civil servants to the elected government of Delhi. Followed this Supreme Court judgment in 19th of May the union government had promulgated an ordinance. This ordinance amended the government of National Capital Territory of Delhi Act 1991 which is to overrule the judgment of Supreme Court. Now what are all the changes brought in by this new ordinance? See the ordinance aims to remove entry 41 of state list. The entry 41 deals with state public service commission. So the ordinance removes entry 41 and takes away the power of Delhi government to control over civil servants to a greater extent. Also as part of this ordinance national capital civil service authority will be established which will decide on matters related to civil servants in New Delhi. This national capital civil service authority will consist of the chief minister of Delhi, the chief secretary of Delhi and the principal home secretary of Delhi and the authority decides on any matter through majority voting. So this particular mechanism creates for a situation that if the two bureaucrats who are appointed by the union government stand together then they can overrule the chief minister's decision. One important point to note here is that even if the body takes a decision unanimously and the lieutenant government takes a different stand then the latter shall prevails. That is the lieutenant governor's decision shall prevail. And as we discussed earlier this ordinance reduces the Delhi government's control over civil servants and it is seen an attempt to override the decision of Supreme Court in this regard. Now moving on to see about how the idea of federalism applies to Delhi. See the Supreme Court in its recent judgment pointed out that Article 239 AA accords a unique status to national capital territory of Delhi. The court also said that all the states and the union territories are not treated in the same manner. In some cases special privileges are given to states or union territories. So this differential treatment of states and the union territories is known as the asymmetric federalism. In a country like India with vast ethnic, linguistic and cultural diversities, asymmetric federalism can satisfy the interests of various social groups through territorial units. See Indian federalism is considered as asymmetric federalism because there are certain features like Article 370 which gave special status to Jammu and Kashmir before its dilution. Then there is Article 371 which deals with special provisions with respect to Gujarat and Maharashtra. Apart from this we also have 5th and 6th schedule areas. From this we can say that India's federalism is an asymmetric federalism. 
seen its recent verdict the supreme court by using this concept of asymmetric federalism the supreme court explained the position of national capital territory of delhi in indian federal structure the court observed that the national capital territory of delhi is not a full fledged state but it should be considered as a federal entity because it has a legislative assembly to legislate on subjects in state and concurrent list further the court said that the insertion of article 239 aa had created an asymmetric federal model for the delhi okay this is all about the federal status of national capital territory of delhi now moving on to see about the issues related to the ordinance which was promulgated by center to have a control over civil servants in delhi see the first and foremost issue is that this ordinance aims to overrule the judgment of the constitutional bench of supreme court see the legislature can only change the legal basis of a judgment but it cannot completely overrule the judgment itself by any other means so the ordinance is viewed as the mechanism to dilute supreme court's power then the next issue is that the supreme court in dc vadwa case ruled that the ordinance can be used only to meet an extraordinary situation and cannot be used to serve the political interests of the ruling party but many view this ordinance as an attempt by the union government to further centralize the administration in national capital territory of delhi to serve its political interests then the constitution has clearly prescribed the powers of delhi government in article 239 aa but this ordinance tries to limit the scope of delhi government with respect to civil servants without making any amendment to the constitution so this would amount to violation of the constitution then the establishment of national capital civil service authority which allows the bureaucrat to overrule the elected chief minister could destroy the long standing norms on bureaucratic accountability okay this is all about the issues surrounding the ordinance promulgated by central government and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the ongoing issues in new delhi that is the issue between central government and delhi government and then we saw about the ordinance promulgated by center in that we saw that the ordinance removes entry 41 of state lists that deals with state public service commission of this delhi government then we saw about the idea of asymmetric federalism and finally we saw some points about the issues surrounding the ordinance promulgated by central government see this topic is very much important for your mains exam as the topic is frequently appearing in news we can expect a mains question this year also so make note of each and every points that we discussed now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article from the science page this article is about the concept of evapotranspiration now in this discussion let us understand what is this evapotranspiration see evapotranspiration is nothing but the combination of two terms that is evaporation and transpiration now when does evaporation occurs evaporation occurs when liquid water is converted to water vapor in this process the water molecules from different water bodies like rivers ponds streams etc they move into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor now coming to transpiration the transpiration is the process through which plants excrete excess water from their body here the stomata present on the surface of leaves helps the plants to discharge the excess water so in this process the water molecules move from the leaves of plants into the atmosphere therefore the evapotranspiration combines the movement of water molecules from plants and water bodies into the atmosphere ultimately the evapotranspiration forms the first part of the water cycle this is all about the evapotranspiration now what are the benefits of evapotranspiration see evapotranspiration acts as a measurement see by using evapotranspiration analysis the farmers can use to estimate the amount of water being taken up or used by their fields and crops by knowing how much water is transferred to the air it allows the farmers to better calculate crop water requirements so evapotranspiration helping the farmers to use water more efficiently and to plan better irrigation methods so in that way the evapotranspiration helps a lot to farmers also remember as evapotranspiration happens it cools the land surface by consuming heat energy it is just like the sprinkler see if we run through a sprinkler on a hot summer day the water droplets fall on our body subsequently the water evaporates and cools our skin in the same way evapotranspiration cools the land surface so areas with the high rates of evapotranspiration are relatively cooler than surrounding areas with lower rates of evapotranspiration 
okay this is all about the benefits of evapotranspiration now let us see some of the factors that affects the evapotranspiration see the evapotranspiration occurring in a particular catchment area depends on various factors this includes soil characteristics environment characteristics soil moisture relationships and so on apart from this the presence of water table the available moisture content in the soil then the density of vegetation in the area see they also have more effects on the overall evapotranspiration for the whole catchment basin apart from this evapotranspiration may also be affected by the geometry of crops root zone depth plant cover and morphology okay these are some of the factors that affects the evapotranspiration and that's all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about what is evapotranspiration then we saw about the benefits of evapotranspiration and finally we saw some points about the factors affecting evapotranspiration so this is a new concept try to remember the facts that we discussed it may be a potential preliminary topic okay now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now take a look at this news article as you can see in the title this news article talks about the north atlantic treaty organization which is in short called as nato according to the news article the chief of nato has asked turkey not to veto against the sweden's bid to join nato okay this is about the news article given here now in this context let us understand about nato and the requirements to join nato now let's start with nato see the north atlantic treaty organization which is in short called as nato is a trans atlantic alliance of 31 like minded north american and european countries the aim of the alliance is to provide collective security against the soviet union it was created in 1949 the alliance promotes democratic values and diplomacy it enables members to consult and cooperate on defense and security related issues note that nato was the first peace time military alliance that the united states entered into outside of the western hemisphere see after the second world war the nations of europe struggled to rebuild their economies and to ensure their security so the united states viewed an economically strong rearmed and integrated europe as vital to the prevention of communist expansion across the continent so this has led to the creation of nato now talking about the members as i already said nato currently has 31 members very recently only that is on april 2023 finland joined nato from this map given here you can look at the members note that germany france poland are members of nato this is all about members now talking about the requirements to join nato see nato's membership is open to any european state in a position to further the principles of nato treaty and it should be ready to contribute to the security of north atlantic area see displayed here are the minimum requirements to join nato anyway as mentioned here these requirements do not constitute automatically to nato membership okay but remember new members must be invited by a consensus of current members there will be a ratification process taking place in each member state in the case of united states decisions are made in consultation with congress so if any one particular member country vetoes a country's bid to join nato the country cannot become a member this is what we saw in today's news article that is turkey is vetoing against the sweden's bid to join nato now coming to the functions of nato the purpose of nato is to guarantee the freedom and security of its members through political and military means politically nato promotes democratic values and enables member to consult and cooperate on defense and security related issues apart from this nato enables the countries to solve problems and to build trust and in the long run nato helps to prevent conflict in addition to this nato is committed to the peaceful resolution of disputes if diplomatic efforts fail nato has the military power to undertake crisis management operations okay this is all about the functions of nato note that all the decisions of nato are taken by consensus this means that nato is an expression of the collective will of all 31 member countries and that's all regarding this article discussion In this discussion we saw about nato its members then we saw about the requirements needed to join nato and finally we saw some points about the functions of nato now with these points in mind let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article here this news article says that 22 indian flapshell turtles and 34 black turtles were burned to death 
This was because of the fire which broke out on a private land in Kasargod, Kerala. This is the news. Now in this context, let us learn about the distribution, characteristics and conservation status of flap shell and black turtles. Now first we will look at the Indian flap shell turtles. See the Indian flap shell turtle is a freshwater turtle species. They are mostly found in South Asia. This species got its name because it has femoral flaps on its plastron. These flaps of skin covers the limbs when they retract into the shell. Okay. Now coming to the characteristics of Indian flap shell turtles. The Indian flap shell turtles live in shallow and stagnant waters of river, streams or ponds. Flap shell prefer water with sand or mud bottoms because of its tendency to burrow. When it comes to food habits, the flap shell turtles are omnivorous in nature. They mostly feed on frogs, fishes, snails, aquatic vegetation, plant leaves, grasses, etc. Now coming to the distribution of Indian flap shell turtles. See, they can be seen in India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bangladesh and Myanmar. Now we will look at the conservation status of Indian flap shell turtle. See, the IUCN status of Indian flap shell turtle is least concern. Apart from this, it comes under Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. In addition to this, Indian flap shell turtle is placed in appendix 2 of the sites which allows international trade in the species without harming them. And this is all regarding Indian flap shell turtles. Now moving on to see about the black turtles. See the Indian black turtle is a freshwater species. They are also mostly found in South Asia and they are most active during early morning and evening. Its size varies from 38 to 45 cm. Now coming to the food habits, Indian black turtles are omnivorous in nature. They feed on aquatic plants and aquatic insects. Sometimes they are seen in groups around the dead body of a large animal. Now coming to the breeding, see the Indian black turtle tend to breed during August to October. The female digs a nest in ground to lay eggs. Sometimes they also lay eggs on the rhinoceros or elephant's dung. Okay, this is all about the characteristics of Indian black turtle. Now we look at the distribution of black turtle. See, the Indian black turtle are found across India, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Nepal and Chagos archipelago. Now, talking about the conservation status, the Indian black turtle are placed under least concern category of the IUCN red list of threatened species. Okay, and that's all regarding Indian black turtle. With this, we have come to the end of this particular discussion. In this discussion we saw about the distribution, characteristics and conservation status of Indian flap shell turtle and the Indian black turtles. Now with these points in mind, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this article here. This article is taken from Sunday's newspaper. This article reports that an awareness program was conducted at the Institute of Child Health on World Club Food Day. That is on 3rd June 2023. Now in this context, let us understand few facts about club food disease. See the club food describes a range of food abnormalities of child that are usually present at birth. The club food is a condition where either or both feet of the child are twisted out of shape or position. Mostly the feet are twisted inward which causes the child to walk on his ankles. Know that club food is one of the most common orthopedic birth defects. As we all know our bones, muscles and joints work together in a coordinated way to move our body and to give it stability. In such organs, tendons and ligaments play an important role. Tendons connect muscles to bones, which allows us to move, and ligaments help to hold things. That is, it gives stability to hold things. But in club foot, the tissues that connect muscle to the bone, particularly the Achilles tendons, are shorter than usual. So it makes the feet to twist inward. Okay, this is how it affects. See the cause of club foot is unknown, so that it is termed as idiopathic. But some experts suggest that club foot may arise due to a combination of genetics and environmental factors. Now talking about the symptoms, see if a child has club foot, the child's top of the foot is usually twisted downward and inward. Then there is an increasing arch and the heel is turned inward. Apart from this, the foot may be turned so severely that it actually looks like the foot is upside down and the affected foot may be up to about 1 cm short than other foot. In addition to this, the calf muscles in affected leg are usually underdeveloped. 
this is all about the symptoms of club foot now talking about the treatment see club foot can be mild or severe about half of the children with club foot have it in both feet if a child has club foot it will make a child harder to walk normally so doctors generally recommend to treat it soon after the birth the most recommended treatment method is ponsetti method this method is used initially and it involves moving foot into an improved position followed by casting see this treatment is repeated at weekly intervals now look at this image here this is how casting is done as part of ponsetti method once the inward bending is improved with the treatment the actually tendon is often cut then the braces are worn until the age of 4 initially braces worn continuously but after some improvement it is enough to use just at night see the doctors usually able to treat club foot successfully without surgery but sometimes the children need follow up surgery okay and that's all regarding this discussion this discussion we saw about the club foot then we saw about the cause of club foot then we moved on to see about the symptoms of club foot and finally we saw some points regarding the treatment method available for club foot now with these key points in mind let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is to discuss preliminary practice questions now look at the first question here six countries are given we have to find how many of the given countries forms part of nato that is north atlantic treaty organization and know that majority of the european countries are members of nato so if you know which of the european countries is not a member then you could easily remember the members of nato countries see accordingly sweden is not a member of nato so from the given countries sweden is add on out and the remaining five countries forms part of nato so the correct answer is option c only five moving on let's take up the second question now look at the question here this question is regarding indian flap shell turtles now look at the first statement indian flap shell turtles are marine water species see this statement is incorrect because the indian flap shell turtles are fresh water species so statement one is incorrect now coming to the second statement its iucn status is endangered see this statement is also incorrect because indian flap shell turtles are placed under least concern category in the iucn red list and not under the endangered category so second statement is also incorrect now coming to the third statement indian flap shells are found only in india see this statement is also incorrect because the indian flap shell turtles are found across india pakistan sri lanka nepal bangladesh and myanmar so third statement is also incorrect we have to find how many of the statements given above are correct here all the three statements are incorrect so the correct answer is option d none moving on let's take up the third question this question is regarding evapotranspiration the question is that evapotranspiration is confined to option a day light hours only option b night time only option c fallow land surfaces only option d none of the above see as we all know evapotranspiration is combined factors of evaporation plus transpiration transpiration is essentially confined to day light hours and the rate of transpiration depends upon the growth of plant on the other hand evaporation continues all throughout the day and night but the rates are high during daylight hours therefore evapotranspiration occurs only during light hours so the correct answer is option a day light hours only now moving on let's take up the final question here two statements are given we have to find whether two statements are correct or not and we have to also confirm that whether the second statement is explaining statement 1 or not i will read out the statements statement 1 if an elder sibling of a baby having club foot disease it increases a baby's risk of being born with the club foot condition statement 2 the club foot can be caused due to genetic factors see here the correct answer is option a both statement 1 statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1 see as we saw in the discussion club foot disease can be caused due to genetics so even if the parents do not have the condition If the older sibling have the condition then the baby might have the club foot condition and some sources say that if a baby has a club foot there is 2.5 percentage chance that its next born sibling will have club foot disease so club foot is twice as common in boys so once again the correct answer here is option a see there is an advantage in this type of question that is any one of the statement is always correct so if you could eliminate or find the other statement is correct or not you could directly arrive at the answer so don't miss these types of questions once again the correct answer here is option a 
both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1. This is the quiz question for you today. I will post this quiz question in your community section. Try to answer it and do not worry the answer for the quiz question is posted in the comment section of the quiz question itself. You can verify it and displayed here are the main questions for your practice. Go through the questions, write your answers and post it in the comment section. With this we have come to the end of the video. If you liked our analysis, please like, comment and share and do not forget to subscribe to Shankar Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.